Uh, Coach, first off, is uh, Kyrie in? Kyrie is in. Okay, you guys um, are still, still shorthanded tonight. Uh, from the start of the season to now, how do you feel like you guys have grown from a mental toughness standpoint when competing while shorthanded? I definitely feel proud of the guys. They've had a lot thrown out of this year. Um, you know, nothing's been straightforward. Nothing's been linear. Nothing's been as you are accustomed to um, you know, playing this game in this league. So our guys have adapted really well all year, played hard, found a way to win a lot of games when you're shorthanded and, you know, really proud of the way that they've stayed focused. They've done what we've asked them to do and, and grown throughout the season. Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Hey, Coach, obviously there's a lot made of these matchups between you guys and Philly because you guys are obviously two of, I guess, the three leading teams that could come out of the East. Um, when you when you enter a matchup like this and you're kind of shorthanded, but they're not, at least I don't think they are, do you do you feel like you have some, type, some sort of a tactical advantage down the line where you're able to see what they may or may not do and you're not necessarily showing your hand because you don't have all your guys? Yeah, you know, I think that's one of those things you can overthink it, you know, like how can we gain an advantage, you know, so much will change and we'll all both be in a different place if we're fortunate enough to meet in the playoffs. So I don't think we take too much away from it. It is an opportunity to, to see see them, to, to feel them and, and get a little more uh, of an understanding of, of how they operate. But, um, you know, so much will change. You know, I think for us, we're still deeply in our own process, trying to see what we can do to continually improve every week and get a little bit better. Malika Andrews, ESPN. Hey, Steve. Uh, first, being deeply in your own process, I, I'm wondering if it's gotten, I don't want to say any easier, or if, if you are looking now at the end of the schedule saying after tonight you have 17 games left, is it more anxiety producing knowing you only have 17 games left and you've only had X amount of games with your big three plus the rest of the guys? Or is it like, well, we, we've kind of, we're here, so this is kind of where we are. Is it more or less comfortable yeah. now? You know, I think I'm, I'm in the camp of the latter. You know, I, I, we may not get any games with our whole roster, right? Like it, nothing is promised tomorrow. So I don't want to worry about or be concerned about things that are out of our control. Um, I also don't want any excuses, uh, you know. So you start playing that game where it's like, well, we haven't had any games with our full roster. You know, that in a sense, that's irrelevant. We don't, we don't control that. You know, we... We just keep moving forward, keep trying to get better. And if we get a full roster, that would be great. And if we don't, we keep plugging away every day. So, you know, I'm not going to worry about when we'll have the full roster. We'll just chip away every day with whoever is available and continue to build this thing. And, and if we're fortunate to have everyone back, then that would be a blessing. And, and then secondly, you know, Kevin said it was going to be sort of a wait and see what went into not playing him tonight. Was there any thought to reverse it, having played tonight and not yesterday? Yeah, we thought about it. You know, I think we – just we just didn't know what today would bring and uh we had a poor performance saturday night we rolled up to minneapolis to try to play there on monday the game was postponed and for us it was like let's just get on the court and play and you know try to get this win that's right in front of us and and we'll keep going because you know we could have sat him for this game lost in minnesota lost the night you go and two what does that do for us just trying to build and so we we haven't you know we just everything's so insecure and uncertain with our roster and availability that we didn't want to play that game where you're overthinking things, trying to be cute, trying to, you know, mix and match. We just said, let's go out and play the game tonight. Let's get back to winning ways. Let's, let's start to focus in on some of the things we did poorly against the Lakers and take that step. Um, you know, because we'd been there for a couple of days, let's go, let's go play the game and let's do well. And then we'll, we'll just keep moving after that. Brian Lewis, New York post. Hey, Steve, this kind of circles back to some of the things that you touched on. But, I mean, A, how do you weigh and judge short-term gains versus long-term health? I mean, example, possibly be having the number one seed on April 14th versus having all your players available on May 16th, you know, when the season's ending. And secondly, Danny Green was saying that he was opining after their shoot-around that there was a certain amount of gamesmanship. Um, that you guys just didn't want to show your your best hand um, because you could see them in the fi in the conference final. What would be your response to that or reaction to that? You know, I'm honestly we didn't think about it that deeply at all. Like, uh, you know, I think when you start to really try to be cute, it uh, it backfires most of the time. So for us, it was just 
James isn't going to play. We weren't sure about Kai. Marcus has been ill. We don't have a full squad anyways. Um, so, you know, it wasn't uh, strategic. It was, this is what, this is the availability we have. And so, um, you know, that's simply what happened is that like, let's not get cute and try to figure this out. Let's win the game in front of us. Cause as the season has shown, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, we lost cheese basically for the regular season yesterday. So, um, you know, something seems to happen every day. We're not overthinking it. We're just trying to get out there and play and knock these games down and get prepared for the playoffs. And I'm sorry, I forgot what your other question was. I was just saying measuring when you're Trump, you and the performance team are weighing short term gains, like potentially being yeah. the number one seed. We're on April 14th versus actually having everybody available on May 16th when the regular season's ending. Yeah. I think health is everything. You know, I mean, it'd be great to have the number one seed. I think it's, it means a lot. It's valuable, but not at the expense of losing players or prolonging our, you know, um, injury situation. So I think we have to be very careful and make sure that uh, our guys get to the finish line as whole as possible. Alex Schiffer, The Athletic. Hey, Steve, you mentioned Chris's injury just with him out and then, you know, you guys being pretty thin at point guard. I mean, is it is Landry, I guess, your your second unit point guard now? And and is there an emergency point guard for maybe a non-traditional point guard that, that you're having to take reps there just because of the injury situation? Yeah, you know, it's not it's not ideal. Um, Kai is thankfully available tonight, uh, which helps it's obviously a ton. But, um, you know, Landry is going to have to handle the ball. Uh, Jeff Green's going to have to handle the ball. You know, different guys are going to have to step up and share in that responsibility and make sure that we can take care of the basketball and get ourselves into actions uh, when Kyrie's not on the court. But, um, you know, this is an experience for us, experience for some of our guys to, to kind of take more responsibility, to think, and problem solve, and, uh, you know, use that as an opportunity to get better. Back to Michael Grady. Coach, uh, Joel Embiid has been a strong player, obviously, in this league for years. What have you seen, you know, on tape uh, that has allowed him to separate himself and put himself in the MVP conversation? Consistency and shot making. You know, he's been incredible, uh, incredibly accurate, you know, scoring the ball. Uh, you know, we know what a dominant physical presence he is, but he's been really accurate in the mid-range and, and, you know, very capable from three as well. So I think his his accuracy and, and shot making ability has taken another step. And, and to do so, you have to be very consistent. He's done that. Last question, Steve Lichtenstein, WFN. Hi, Steve. I'm sorry to belabor the point about Kevin, but as you were managing the game yesterday and the lead was growing, did you ever come to a point where you had to make a decision? You know, do I, is there a chance that we could have him available today? Versus, let's get him the the ramp up minutes that we desired to move him along in that regard. Yeah, the way they definitely thought about it. The the way it was designed, the ramp up is to have forty eight hours between you know high intensity physical out, output. So you know it's not really ideal to limit his minutes last night and have him come right back and play without that forty eight hours in between. In a sense, so you know I, I never really wanted him to do both. You know, I think we got to protect him and make sure, although you know, he's dying to play, um, we we got to make sure we protect him and he can fully overcome this injury and feel strong, you know, going forward. So um, we didn't really consider it once he started and played last night. It was more, it was more at what time do we get him out of the game uh, that was, you know, kind of already put to bed, knowing that he needs to get more minutes in his legs uh, to build and grow and to, you know, ramp, his, ramp himself up again. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Steve.